So today let's try to test this 1000 watt power supply from the previous episode. I already explored the internal of it and now there's time to actually plug it in and test it. Here's the label of it and a connected cable to it and a plug and let's initially test it with no load and measure the output voltage and then let's try to load it and leave it running for some time. So let's plug it in. It's 24 volts, it's about right and the fan is extremely loud. It's a turbo fan and I also could hear the relay clicking. And when I unplug it, I can hear some very strange noises from it. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Let's try it once more with the camera a bit closer. Plugging it in. Unplugging it. What's this? It sounds like a UFO. Does it come from the fan? Or is it the power supply trying to restart after it's unplugged? Well, let's unplug the fan and let's see. It's not loaded, so it shouldn't be a problem. Let's briefly plug it in and unplug it. No strange noises now, so it was probably coming from the fan. And also the fan is super loud and it says the input voltage is 12 volts. But the power supply supplies 24 volts. Is there any voltage regulator for it? Let's try to measure the voltage going into the fan. Well, there is actually 24 volts going into the fan. Bloody hell, are you kidding me guys? The 12 volt fan is connected straight to 24 volts. And that's why it's so extremely loud. Did they accidentally put the wrong fan in it or did they omit the voltage regulator to make it cheaper? There seem to be some omitted components on the board and a second connector for a fan. Maybe originally the fan was meant to be connected via some voltage regulator and another capacitor here through a connector here but then they connected it straight to the output. Or did they deliberately overdrive the fan in a desperate attempt to prevent the poor design from overheating? It's quite weird and I'm not sure how long the fan is going to run at double the voltage. But anyway, now let's try to load it using a heater. It used to be a main voltage heater, probably from a water boiler, but I have split it into several sections and I can put them into various series or parallel combinations to get different resistances or different loading currents. And the power supply says 41.7 amps. And I put it in a configuration where it draws... It's actually very close! So it's loaded very close to its maximum current and let's put the cover on it. And of course this label covers a big portion of those cooling holes, which definitely doesn't help. This is just a horrible design disaster. So the power supply is covered and now let's keep it running. And of course testing this in the middle of a hot summer is a horrible idea. Ten minutes, still no explosion. So it ran for about two hours, surprisingly with no failure. I left it to cool down and now let's try it once more with the probe of my thermometer connected here to the transistors. Or actually to the heat sink right under the transistors in it. 
So let's keep it running. It's loaded at about 40 amps and now it runs for about 3 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. The temperature doesn't go up anymore or not so much. And the voltage is quite stable under the load. One hour. In total it ran for about three and a half hours and no failure. Unlike the 600 watt version which failed after just one hour. So this one seems to be a little bit better. And also the temperature settles at about 57 degrees Celsius. Basically on this heat sink here, right under the transistors, which is the hot spot. The hot spot of this one was over 100 degrees Celsius, about 103 degrees. This one runs much cooler, but it also may be because the fan is quite overdriven. But of course the fan running at double its rated voltage will probably fail very soon. And when the fan stops it will cook itself completely in probably just a couple minutes or less. Now let's do some quick measurements. I put one sensing turn on this transformer and here is the waveform on it. Now it's loaded just 5 amps using those lamps and now I run it without the annoying fan because it's not needed for a quick test at a light load. And here is the waveform, the operating frequency 84-85 kHz and the upper part of the waveform is when the transistors are on and the lower part is when the core is resetting, via the resetting diodes. And the frequency kind of wobbles, probably to reduce the interference. And also the duty cycle periodically changes to compensate for the ripple on the primary smoothing capacitors. And the amplitude of the top of it is about two divisions. And it's 5 volts per division, so it's about 10 volts. And the rectified 230 volt mains is about 320 volts DC. Divided by 10 is about 32 turns on the primary probably. But strangely the bottom of it, where it's resetting, is rounded. It's not a square wave. It seems like there is just a very little magnetizing current in the transformer. And because normally when it's resetting, it hits the resetting diodes and it's flat here. Is there even any current flowing through the resetting diodes? That's weird. Now let's put the sensing turn on the gate driving transformer here. And that's a horrible mess, it's very far from a square wave. Is it really that distorted or is it distorted just in the sensing turn? Well, that's actually the gate of the lower MOSFET. This is a gate driving disaster, isn't it? And that's the primary of the gate driving transformer. And the current sensing resistors. And it seems to be already in a continuous conduction mode at 5 amps. Now loaded at 30 amps. It's much farther in a continuous conduction mode. And the top of it is less steep. And basically when it's running in a continuous conduction mode, the current in the output inductor doesn't fall to zero before the transistors turn back on. In a continuous conduction mode, the current ripples like this on the inductor but never goes to zero. But in a discontinuous conduction mode, it falls to zero before the transistor or transistors turn back on. And of course the higher the inductance of the output inductor, the more it tends to be in a continuous conduction mode. If the inductance was even higher, the current ripple on it would be even lower, like this. A higher inductance of the output inductor can contribute to a lower voltage ripple at the output. And the higher inductance of it also reduces the ripple current of those output capacitors, which helps to make them last longer. Because electrolytic capacitors are generally quite tricky and they tend to wear out. So it's better if most of the ripple is filtered out using the inductor, not the capacitors. Using a too low inductance increases the output ripple but also reduces the life of those capacitors. Let's try to load it. About 30 amps. And here is the output ripple. Let's stop it. It's a sawtooth about one division, about 100 millivolts. Plus some very short spikes on it. 
and I believe it doesn't make any sense to draw the full schematic of it because it's quite similar to the 600 watt power supply. The input section is very similar other than the NTC thermistor is here and it's just one and it's later bypassed by the relay. The rest of it is similar. The control circuitry is probably different. But this main switching circuitry is probably the same and the secondary side of the gate driving transformer is probably very similar as well. The gate driving circuits have this added resistor in series with a diode, so it's actually discharging the gate faster and charging slower. But otherwise it's very similar because it's again a TU switch forward and the secondary side of it is very similar as well, but it has four double diodes in a parallel instead of just two. And this is very similar and also the voltage feedback is probably just a normal voltage sensing with a TL431 voltage reference and an optocoupler. I am probably not going to reverse engineer the entire control circuitry with the chip, but I might try to reverse engineer the circuitry that drives the primary of this gate driving transformer, because I'm interested why the waveform is so horrible. So in the next episode I might try to reverse engineer this section. So this is Dark Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course you can also become my patron to support my channel and get early videos. The link to my Patreon is in the description as well as the link to my Instagram. And of course in the next episode the autopsy of this transformer, this inductor and also measuring the capacitance and impedance of those capacitors which are probably fake and maybe also an autopsy. Those labels have to be fake.